Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Nahid Akhtar and in this video, we are going to talk about slicers. Slicers provide a great way to filter data in a visual and interactive way. For example, these controls here are slicers. I have three slicers here, each one color coded and you can clearly see what each of them do. For example, this one filters by city, this one filters by order date and so on. So let me first demonstrate what you can do with these slicers and I'll later show you how to create them. Now I have in this tab a data set with data on food sales by an imaginary company. As you can see, the data set is quite large. If I scroll down, there are around 245 rows and 7 columns, which include the product sold, uh, the category the product falls under, the city they were sold from, and the date the product was ordered. We also have the number of units sold, the unit price, as well as the total price for all the units sold. Now, this is a large data set. So to get some insights, I have in this tab some pivot tables and charts that are based on this data set. This pivot table here displays the total units sold for each product. And this one displays the category-wise total sales. The bar chart here displays city-wise sales made by the company. Now this summarizes the whole data set for us. But what if we want to see only the data relating to say Boston City? When you have a slicer for the city, you can simply select Boston and voila, you only see the data relating to Boston. See, only Boston. What if you want to see data relating to Boston and New York? Simple, just include these two in the filter. And you get filters simultaneously on all the entities here that are based on our original data set, including this, this, and this. You can further also filter by order date. And we can keep adding more filters as needed. So in other words, slicers essentially cut into your data and take a slice of it for you to see. Now you could ask me, why use slicers when we already have filters in Excel? Well, the great thing about slicers is that you set the filter on a single slicer and you're able to filter all the entities on this page that are based on the same source data. With filters, you'd have to filter each entity separately. Slicers are also visual elements, so you can move them around like any other control and you can position them where you like. So stack them one on top of the other, put them next to each other, and basically make your page look neat and organized. Filters, on the other hand, are tied to their respective entities. So you can't really, you know, move them. So now that we've seen how amazing slicers can be, let's see how we can create one. Let me just remove these slicers first. Delete. Oops. Delete. Delete. And we're back to our original pivot tables and charts. Now let's create our first slicer. An important tip here, you should always specify the source data set as the data range for your slicer. This will make sure that all entities that are based on this data set are affected by your slicer. So we select data, add a slicer, and we now select the range of our source data, which is sheet one, A1 to G245. Okay, and that's it. Our slicer has been created, but this doesn't really do anything yet. Let's just move this here first. Okay, so now we want our slicer to be associated with a particular column. This is the column by which we want our slicer to filter our data. You can only have one column associated with a single slicer. So say we want the slicer to filter by city. Simply double click the slicer and this will open the slicer sidebar. And from here, under the data tab, you can see columns for your source data under column. 
We want to filter by city. So let's select it. And now you can see the column name city as the title of this slicer. Let's make another slicer. Okay, let's move it here. And this one will filter by order date. And you can see the column name order date is the title of this slicer, but it doesn't need to be. We can change this title to make it more descriptive. So let's customize the slicer. In the slicer sidebar, let's select the customize tab and type the new title as filter by order date. There, that makes it easier to understand. And let's also change the title of our first slicer to filter by city. You can also change how your slicer looks. For example, let's say I want to color code the slicers or change them to a color that goes with the theme of my dashboard. This is essentially a dashboard, right? So to change the color of this slicer, simply change the background color. I want this color, dark orange too. And for this one, I want dark yellow too. You can also change the font style, size, color, and so on. For now, let's just leave it as it is. Well, our slicers are now ready. You can now use them to filter the entities. So let's get all the data related to Boston. We filter by value and set the filter to Boston. And now you have all the data only related to Boston. And now let's get all the orders of Boston that were made after June 30th, 2020, let's say. So for that, we want to filter by condition. And you know how filters work. Date is after, exact date, and 30th June 2020. Click OK. And there it is. You have all the data related to Boston for orders that were made after June 30th, 2020. So these are all data related to Boston, right? Because we had already set that filter with the first slicer. We can also change this to Boston and New York. And now you get all the data of Boston and New York for orders made after June 30th, 2020. So that's it for this video. Hope I've been able to give you a basic understanding of slicers and how they work. If you found it helpful, please hit the like button and click on subscribe to get to know when we post more videos like this. Thank you and have a nice day.